Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to Health and Fasting. In this episode, we're going to be talking about obesity and how to what it means and how to deal with it, and looking at some elements of exercise and why and how this might be related to fasting. <coughs> so, before we go into detail, I think it's worth discussing what is obesity and what does it mean, and then looking at certain prevalences of obesity in different parts of the world. So. When we talk about being overweight and obese, the way we measure that is by looking at something called body mass index or BMI. Now what that means in simple terms is how heavy you are for how tall you are. So we will take a person's height in meters and their weight in kilograms and what we will do is we will take their weight and divide it by their height squared. And that will give us a value of BMI. So then you can compare someone who is six foot six to someone who is five foot two and get an idea of how heavy they are for, for their height. And then when we look at the values, normal BMI is from 19 to 25. Overweight is from 25 to 30 and obese is 35 plus and that is the category that is the most harmful. So looking at this, you can uh, easily work out your BMI at home, take your weight in kilograms and your height in meters and use that formula to work out your BMI. And you'll have an idea of how healthy you are in terms of your weight. So the next slide we have shows the prevalence of obesity in different parts of the world. As we can see on this slide, it's quite surprising actually that the countries where the level of obesity is the highest is actually the Middle Eastern and Gulf countries. One would perhaps think that it would probably be America. America is not far behind, but actually it's the Gulf countries where you look at pop uh, obesity per head and it's the highest percentage of obesity. So this is a big problem for Muslims and Muslim countries and something that we really need to be aware of in terms of recognizing and how to also deal with it and manage it. So it is what was quite a surprise to me when I learned this and, and found out this fact that actually the Middle Eastern countries are the most obese in the world. And that's not a good thing. If Muslims are ahead in anything, they sh certainly shouldn't be ahead in this. And it's something that we need to deal with and tackle. Okay, so why uh, is obesity important? So we'll talk about that in a second. In this slide, we can see that in the UK, this is the period from 2006 to 2010 we can see that the highest percentage of obesity was in Afro-Caribbean women followed by Pakistani uh, Southeast Asian women. So again, this is a big problem in ethnic minority communities and particularly in the Muslim community in the UK where obesity is a very high level. And unfortunately, it's the women who are the most obese out of the uh, population. So not only are we in the obese category, it's the ladies who are the highest in that category. So again, a really important thing for us to be aware of and think about why that may be the case and how we can try and tackle it. So let's talk briefly about what are some of the problems with obesity. So obviously some of the main problems that people will be aware of are the risks for things like diabetes and heart disease. So the biggest factor for type 2 diabetes is without doubt obesity. Type 2 diabetes is closely linked to obesity and if we look at all of the risk factors, there is no single risk factor that is more likely to cause someone to become diabetic. <clears throat> and we've discussed in another program about the problems with diabetes and all of the health issues that are related to that. So type 2 diabetes and obesity are very closely linked and there's a strong correlation between them. And if someone is obese, they are quite likely to develop type 2 diabetes. This is particularly the case in the Southeast Asian population who have a genetic predisposition to, to develop diabetes. So evidence has shown that when people have migrated from India, Pakistan and come to the UK, they have been more obese than their family in their home countries, but also more obese than the ethnic home population, i.e. the white population in the UK. This is a combination of genetic risk factors and lifestyle that they've adopted. Although having said that, nowadays, 
in India and Pakistan with the onset of fast food, modern lifestyle, we also see levels of obesity rising in these countries as well. So it is a global worldwide problem that really does need to be highlighted and addressed. So obesity and diabetes are closely linked as we've discussed. <clears throat> but however, there are also other links of obesity and other problems. So the main one being cardiovascular and heart disease. So again, things like blood pressure, ischemic heart disease, which includes things like angina and heart attacks, the risk of other vascular problems such as stroke. So big major life problems, major medical issues are related to the risks connected with obesity. So it's not a small problem, it's something that we really need to think about seriously and think why is this affecting us and how can we deal with it. So diabetes, heart disease, stroke, all of these things are really closely linked to obesity. <clears throat> Other things that also people may not be aware of are respiratory conditions. So respiratory disease is also linked to uh, obesity. So again, the problems associated with that, problems with breathing, when you're less able to move, you're less able to get air into your lungs. So these are problems that are related with obesity as well. In addition, also, which people may not think about, is the risk and the impact on our joints. So the strain that obesity places on our joints. So things like osteoarthritis, which normally is a condition of old age. So people 60, 70 plus would suffer with osteoarthritis. But what we're seeing is with the onset of obesity, people as young as 40, 50, sometimes even younger, are suffering osteoarthritis. This should normally be a condition of old age associated with wear and tear. But as people are putting more pressure on their joints because they're overweight and obese, this causes wear and tear of the joints and it causes the joints to become uh, old before their time and it causes problems with osteoarthritis. Now this may not seem to be a problem to some people, but think about the effect it has on you and your ability to go about your day-to-day -day life. The ability to move, the ability to do your job. Lots of people need to be uh, agile and active for their job, people who are doing things such as uh, manual work, carpenters, carpet fitters, plumbers, all of these people need to be active and able to move around properly. So people who need to be alert and active and mobile during their jobs, it causes a big problem for them. <coughs> it causes a big problem for people like this. But also things like back pain. Being obese is linked to increased episodes of back pain and back pain is the major cause of time off of work for musculoskeletal related problems, so problems with your joints and back pain being the biggest biggest time of loss of work. So obesity is also related to back pain. So you can see the impact that this has, not just on your health, but also on your ability to work and the ability to the society at large, time lost from work, sickness, absence, all sorts of things, your employers having to pay out sick pay or having to have someone else cover your job whilst you're not there. So sometimes we think that it's just related to the major conditions like heart disease and blood pressure, which it is, but there are also these other issues which are very important to be aware of and think about when we're talking about obesity. Also things that people may not be directly aware of, there is shown to be a link between obesity and depression. And those who are obese have been shown to be more depressed. Now sometimes the link is not entirely clear. Is it the cause or the effect? So sometimes it's thought that mental health and depression may lead to obesity, but there's certainly a link and they do interact with each other. And there's shown to be evidence that those who are obese tend to have higher levels of depression. So it also affects your psychological well-being and mental health. So another very important factor that we need to be aware of in terms of when we're talking about obesity and the problems that it causes. Also, something very interesting that I found out about when I was looking into this topic is the incidence of dementia. Now, dementia is a problem of old age, advanced years, 80 plus normally, where you have memory problems and difficulty with orientation and remembering things and finding your way. And there has been some evidence to show that depression, uh, dementia and obesity are linked. So those who are obese, can be more prone to develop dementia. So something that may not be initially obvious and something that has long-term implications because people are living longer now 
and they're living well into their 80s and 90s, so dementia is becoming more and more common. So the link between obesity and dementia is also a very interesting and important fact for us to consider. But it's not only older people who are affected, younger people, for example, thinking about fertility. So the effect of obesity on fertility is massive. So ladies who are overweight and obese have difficulty conceiving, they have difficulty becoming pregnant, and that can have a huge impact on both your mental and physical well-being. So the family in Islam is a very important thing for us, and we all hopefully will have a family and carry on the future generations. But if you are obese, your fertility is decreased, and your chance of having a family is also decreased. So it's really important for us to think about that and remember that it's, again, another important complication and uh, problem with obesity. So fertility is another issue that we need to be aware of. So let's just recap now. So we've talked about obesity, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, joint problems, dementia and depression, and fertility. So the list is massive. There's a huge problem and complications associated with obesity. So now we've discussed some of the health implications of obesity. How can we try and tackle this? Well, Ramadan is a great opportunity for us to A, become aware of this and B, think about how we can tackle this. So as we've discussed before, not overeating and thinking about the healthy types of food that you can eat. So we've talked about complex carbohydrates, less refined foods. So we talked about brown rice instead of white rice, brown flour instead of br uh, white flour, lentils, pulses, these things that we class as low GI foods, these are really important for us to think about and look into, and these will definitely go a long way for us in helping us combat obesity. So looking at the diet is a very important fact, and using Ramadan as the springboard from which to launch these changes. So we start making the changes in Ramadan and try and continue them, inshallah, in the months and years afterwards. And in fact, there's been studies conducted in Islamic countries such as Turkey, where they've shown that people who have initiated a healthy lifestyle in Ramadan and who continue that for three, four months afterwards show long-term health benefits going forward. So they manage to decrease the episodes and incidents of blood pressure, heart attacks, all sorts of things. So if we start the healthy lifestyle and then try and maintain it, then that will hopefully continue and give us long-term benefits. So not only spiritual benefits, but physical benefits from inst instituting these healthy lifestyle changes. And very briefly, talking about exercise, what does exercise mean? So when we tell patients about exercise, we mean talking about ideally 30 minutes of vigorous exercise, which means you feel hot, you start to sweat, your respiratory rate and heart rate go up, so you start to feel tired, out of breath. And now 30 minutes of sustained exercise, ideally five times a week. So this is something to think about and think how we can start instituting this in our life. Now, if in Ramadan we can start to make some plans to try and do some exercise, that will be a fantastic use of this month to try and institute healthy lifestyle changes so that we can make a change and start going forward with this and inshallah use the opportunity of this month to think about how we can institute these changes in our lives. But having said that, we need to be careful and aware that during long fasts, we don't want to over-exercise or over-exert ourselves because we will be hungry for 18 hours. So it's being careful about that, but just thinking how we can start making these changes. So for example, if we walk to work or cycle to work, or if we have to take public transport, get off one stop earlier before your destination and walk the last few uh, last mile or so to your workplace, these sorts of things might be useful for us to think about and start making changes so that we can take these forward and use this opportunity to hopefully become healthier and more well, or more well individuals. So I hope that you found this episode useful. We we'll look forward to seeing you in a future episode when we'll be discussing more issues in relation to health and fasting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank <laughs> you.